it's day three, and I'm trying to get this spindle going. And I actually have an issue. This is a 12,000, 12,500 spindle, RPM spindle. And when I do it, so right, right now I'm at 6,000 RPM. And I'm pushing 6,000 RPM. In Mach 3, I'm getting 12,000 RPM here. So I already know what the issue is. So um, actually, it's outputting 12 volts, but it's not adjusting it should be 0 to 10 volt but I'm getting a 12 volt output um, let me show you that real fast so at 6000 rpm I should be getting about 5 volt but instead I'm getting um, so instead I'm getting actually 12 volt which is more than 10 volt but I mean that would be 100% spindle as far as the controller th is concerned but that should really be more about, about 5 volt because that's about half of what this thing's capable of. And I can't, I've been looking around for hours, so. Not sure what the deal is. All different configurations, so I'm still going to try to figure that out because this should be a 0 to 10 volt output to control this. 0 to 10 volt standard uh, Mach 3. But I even have the instructions here. And 0 to 10 volt going into this device. But I can't get 0 to 10 volt on the board. I don't know what's up. Alright, so now it's time to wire in the uh, the main board here, the front board, control board. So I showed you this in a previous video, the uh, front board here in the mount. So it basically has a tachometer, a uh, control knob, and I have an on and off, spindle on and off right there, and I also have uh, auto and manual. So auto is uh, being controlled by Mach 3, and manual is being controlled with this knob right here. And I also have an alarm, alarm LED, red LED, so in case the thing fails or overheats it's gonna give me a red warning here I right, got the control board going so it's pretty basic I got a, I got a 10 volt coming in got a ground coming in and it's kind of distributed the ground here and got the red positive kind of distributed and this is sort of acting as a distribution block so I have my spindle on enable disable um, and then the auto manual and then the sense back it's going to alternate between the the pot and the actual uh, the Mach 3 signal. So that, that, that two-pole switch right there, that is going to be how it sends the 0 to 10 volt back to the uh, spindle control here. Alright, i got to make this nice and tight. Hopefully I can find a sleeve and we'll test it out and see what works. Alright, there's the wiring. Feeds back. It's going to be all buttoned up when I'm done with it. Um, the reason why when I designed this chip containment system, I really wasn't thinking about this. I mean, I actually had the, I designed the mount, because I knew I'd do eventually, I got LCD up here, but LCDs are useless. Uh, so, alright, so right, auto, it will be controlled by Mach 3, so no control, spindle off, so go manual, see, it's off, no control, spindle on. Thousand max speed twelve thousand yeah seems so the alarm light yeah it doesn't seem to want to go below. the alarm light like there's a certain level all right I'll come back tomorrow I'm gonna start wiring in steppers I'm gonna convert this back to NEMA 23 and gotta get the rest of the x-axis I'm actually gonna put some limit switches on this thing too I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do that I gotta design some mounts all right so I got the axis wired up I'm gonna clean these wires up all nice and tight when I'm done Still fishing down end stops. Take a show you what's up. Yeah, those are uh, 1204 ball screws. Didn't hear a video about the upgrade. I think all this stuff is all custom. It's on my uh, Thingiverse page if you want to do a ball screw conversion.
Yeah, I also have to do a couple other things too. Um, it's all ball screw now. But this right here, I have to move. I have to redesign my light thing and move it up a little bit because before I didn't actually have this piece. So now to get to full full range of motion, I need to kind of move this light out of the way. So I got to move this up about probably about 30 millimeters forward so I can actually clear this part right here. Let me show that real fast. So it basically hits my uh, light and containment system here. See right there? Alright, so I gotta move this forward here so it clears this part here. Alright, so, uh, end stops. Alright, so I set up an index pin. I might actually make individual videos of all the stuff I learned. Say a Mach 3 with this USB controller. So if you guys are, have the same one from Amazon, you could kind of take, use my steps, like pins and ports. But uh, So the index pin is actually sending a tag signal back to Mach 3. So I'm sending out 10 volt to control the spindle, but to calibrate this thing, it needs to know what the motor is spinning at. So it helps it actually calibrate the spindle. So it's, sending out the, it's, it's a 5 volt pulse that goes back into the uh, in, uh, right now input uh, 4. And you can see that I've acted on the green index, so it's actually receiving a signal. So, um, yeah, now I can do the uh, spindle calibration, see if I can get that going, because right now my spindle is like way off. So, I'm trying to calculate the uh, spindle right now. Yeah. Alright, so this thing never actually came with end stops. So, it's actually super important to have end stops. Um, well, I mean, it's not crazy important, but. Um, if you ever want to actually do something on your bed, like eventually I want to have a tool setter, maybe like in the corner. So it needs to know the actual real zero, the home humming zero. That way it knows where to go. Uh, it would actually know where to go to the uh, real coordinates. Not your actual part zero, but the actual coordinates of the system. Like there's two different zeros. Um, so right now I just have this one glued on, so I'm going to hit it, tap it, and then I'm going to drill it and tap it with the M3. That's what I did with this one. So i got to figure out also the the Y bed back there. So it's, it's a little bit different because the 3018, because of the bed moves. Uh, whereas a lot of the other ones, uh, the, the whole gantry moves back and forth. You know, this way, X, Y, and Z, or X and Y go back and forth. Well, X, Y, and Z is all in one plane going back and forth. Um, Alright, so I'm going to tap those. Alright, so I pretty much have given up on this blue board here. Um, Everything seems to work. I mean, the inputs are a little weird, but um, it is a USB controller, so it's running off this microprocessor, which then sends the pulses back. But um, I said I get this red card. There's more documentation with the red card. I mean, about the same price. Um, <coughs> so, uh, yeah, it's like $34 on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. But my main problem was the, the 10 volt output on the spindle, you know? I could never get it, it would say at 12 volts. So no matter what, no matter what I did, it'd say 12 volts. I don't know if this thing is the resistor in parallel, um, or excuse me, in series with the output was not right or not functioning correctly, because it's supposed to step down the 12 volt to 10 volt. So you would need some sort of resistor or, or pot uh, in between. I thought, I mean, I even thought about soldering a pot in there, but yeah, I was like, man, I don't, I don't want to spend hours to, trying to figure that out. So um, yeah, this one actually has a 10 volt uh, input, which I might have to use my buck converter to modify but um, like I said there was a lot more documentation on this board so um, I'm gonna, hopefully the, it looked like the, the footprint was exactly the same I measured it well online so it should just be a straight swap take that out power um, and I should be able to move this stuff around because it looks like even the, the, the wiring is almost exactly the same so um, all right, I'm gonna get that out swap them out there is some stuff that I like about this green card. What I noticed is it has its own dedicated 5 volt for each uh, stepper. So, this one I'm going to have to actually share them and put them together. I don't know if I'm going into too much detail with these videos or not, but. Um, so, i got to figure out a way to get these all into one 5 volt. So, yeah, that's definitely sort of annoying compared to this one. Alright, guys, making some progress here. Got the lights hooked up again. Had a small issue with the, uh, well, not really an issue, but the air pump that I have is not powerful enough to overcome the uh, 
um, it's trying to siphon water because it has the, the water cooling system. So I might get rid of the cooling system and just stick with the air. So I bought another tube like this. Um, and I'm going to actually probably design a block, you know, a quarter inch uh, block. But I can't even do that because if you look at this, well, I mean, I can't even just take this tube off and reuse it because if you look in there, it also has like this, you know, like a water, you know, like a siphon to, to bring drop the water. So I, instead of actually doing that, I'm just going to use it for a different, different build uh, because I have some pretty big plans coming up here in the future for uh, CNC. But, alright, so let me show you the end stops. I got the, well, I didn't use end stops. I'm just using humming switches. And in the manual, it shows that you can actually share all these in one input pin, but I couldn't get it to work. So, um, I'll, I'll go through Mach 3 and I'll show you what, uh, how to do here. So, I have three grounds right there. I hope you can see that. I can put that away. Um, so, I have three grounds connected to one. And that little blue thing on that plastic thing is I actually I 3D printed that. And it's to allow me to get more 24 volt rails. Um, so this actually just goes back to my 24 volt power supply. Um, that way, because on this device you have up here is the 24 volt side, down here is the USB 5 volt side. So all these end stops need to be on the 24 volt side. Um, but what I was saying is they actually in, in the manual they show all these things being connected together on one pin uh, input pin. I couldn't get it to work, so I have uh, four input pins, three for the home switches, and one is for the probe right there. So let me go through Mach 3 and I'll show you what's up. Uh, Alright. So that's a diagnostic screen. I'm going to just do a quick probe. And you can see right there. So the probe is working. And uh, let me do a quick home real fast. Uh, on this screen, this guy is a uh, uh, physics anonymous. So I'm going to do reference all. So it's just going to home everything out. Home Y, Home X. So those are actually my limit switches or, or home switches. They could be either or. So that's going to be my true machine zero. The reason why I actually wanted to have, you don't actually have to have home switches or limit switches, but in case I ever want to create some of my custom macros, uh, let's say like an auto, you know, like a, like a tool touch off tool or whatever like that. I want to be able to put it maybe like in the back corner or put this probe in the back corner so I can do like an automatic um, like a, a height offset so I can when I'm changing tools I can just go and hit the auto calibrate and it'll actually go down and touch off the tool um, what else do I have? okay let me show you real fast it's interesting to get this thing to work the problem with these these Chinese uh, Mach 3 controllers is not a lot of documentation to them well, it's not very specific step by step so ports and pins, inputs. So for this one, um, I had to do uh, port three, and pin number one is the X home. For some reason, they all they all have to be port three to work. If you don't use port three, it doesn't work. Pin two, pin three, then my probe's on pin four. All right, there. So port three, pin four. All right, so that's cool. Getting it to work. I mean, it's pretty much done now. Um, I'm, I'm just going to work on the air thing here, and uh, I want like a more a direct flow with no obstructions, just because this thing is not powerful, but it's just enough air to blow chips out of the way. Um. Alright, so now i got to design a back cover. Yeah, I didn't want to do that until I knew exactly how when I was done, um, you know, like what, where the USB thing would be, because i got to put a hole for that thing, a hole for the wire up here on the top. And I might run some shrink wrap on this thing, the uh, Y motor. That's what it's looking like so far. I'm gonna do a, a, a after this video. I'm gonna do another video on on Mach 3, uh, the controllers, the USB controllers, and a difference between a smooth stepper uh, card and one of these cheaper USB ones. So, all right, that's cool. That's uh, end of this video. In the next video, I'll be cutting cut material. So.